Okay, here we go. Oh, uh, hold on. Let me just change the scenery. You guys really seem to love the first video I made. Now, I'm not going to go back and say that video I made was good at all, but I still stand by most of the opinions I made, and I would definitely have changed some of the ending I did. And after many comments of asking when the sequel is coming out, well, here it is. You know, despite my username being Portal 2 player, I've made a total of one videos about Portal 2. But that all changes today! And so here we go, ranking almost every Portal 2 mod. Oh, and by the way, I will not be going over Portal 2 Community Chambers unless they were created into mods, so yeah. Just don't be upset that I didn't include Into the Multiverse or Back at Your Science in this list. Well, what better place to start this video with than with Portal Stories Mel? This is one of the bigger mods people think of when you mention Portal 2 mods, which makes sense. The test chambers all play very well, they look good visually, and the story is fine. Oh, and yeah, the music to this mod is actually really good, and you should definitely check them out. But yeah, there's nothing too wrong with this mod. And yeah, there is a group of people out there who will be all like, Oh, this mod is not as good as the people say. It's actually very overrated, and it doesn't get the praise it deserves. Why am I speaking in a German and Russian accent at the same time? <laughs> so yeah, I'll give Portal Story Smell a 9 out of 10. If you're into Portal 2 and tired of workshop maps, you should check this one out. Aperture Tag is another one of the more well-known Portal 2 mods, with the main gimmick being that instead of shooting portals, you shoot the two gels. While I do think this is a good idea and concept, and there are a lot of chambers you can make with this, you kinda just limit yourself to only movement and momentum-based gameplay. And while this isn't bad, it just is a bit more restricted than portal-based chambers. Plus, a lot of the chambers in this mod just feel very simple. Like, you complete one part of the chamber, then go on to another, and then another, and then you finish the chamber without ever revisiting those areas or doing anything else with them. Which, doing something like that makes the chambers feel very streamlined. Though this mod actually does have workshop mapping capabilities, which will definitely keep you playing longer than other mods. This is also one of, if not the only Portal 2 mods that you actually have to pay for. Which, if you know anything about making source mods paid for, then... Give me money, give me money, give me money, give me money, give me money. So, I give this a 7 out of 10. If the mod was a bit more complex with its chambers, I'd rate it higher. Also, I just want to say, the trailer for this mod mentions new characters, when there is a total of one new character. And I guess two, if you really want to count this guy. What? 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 No! These names are ridiculous sometimes. I will call it when I want. We will discuss this later. I am in the middle of an experiment. Okay, I really gotta play this one? Alright, can't keep that streak up, I guess. So, thinking with Time Machine was based off of something in the Portal 2 beta? I don't know, there's a lot of stuff in there. And if you can't tell, this one isn't that great, and for a few reasons. One, things just happen in the game for no reason. If you've played this mod before, I'm pretty sure you already know where I'm going with this. So one chamber, you naturally press down a button at the start to have a cube drop down, but instead a phonograph drops down? Okay, and then 10 seconds later, the literal Borealis crashes through the test chamber, revealing Gladys' room. Yeah. That's not the only time things just happen, just look at the beginning and ending. Two. The whole rewind slash clone mechanic, while interesting, is just glitchy. Sometimes the clone just won't move, or drop a cube in the wrong place. Three. The whole game just seems very... empty. Sort of. You see, for some reason, there is no music in any of the test chambers, with the only thing you hear being the same behind the scenes soundscape or the fizzler sound effect. Plus, there's some chambers that you can just accidentally get trapped in and you have to reload your save. Now, with that all being said, there are some good parts of this mod. Uh, I like the cube building animation. That's cool. Oh, and also, like after Tag, this one has community workshop maps, though not as much, because I guess it's pretty hard to make a chamber with this concept without it being extremely broken. I give Thinking with Time Machine a 4 out of 10. If this mod had a more coherent story, was a bit less glitchy, and had some music, it would be better. Portal Reloaded is a bit of a newer Portal 2 mod, coming out on its 10th anniversary, and its main gimmick being that you have a portal gun that shoots a time portal, allowing you to travel into the past and future. I do think that this is a pretty cool concept and is used well. Some of the chambers are actually pretty difficult and had me think for a while, so yeah. But with that, I just really think the mod is fine. 
But yeah, I do like this mod, and it kind of reminds me of those old time travel maps in the workshop. Anyone remember those? Oh, and by the way, I just want to add this. If you're new to Portal 2 and you haven't played like any community maps or any hard chambers, I probably wouldn't suggest this mod. Just saying, you'll understand what I mean like three chambers in. I give Portal Reloaded a 7 out of 10. It's fun, but not generally my favorite. Though I can see why a lot of people would really like this mod. Oh jeez, Weeby Data. This mod is so complicated and weird that it honestly deserves a whole other video to talk about its development. But basically, I'll condense it all down here. So, now this might sound strange, Weeby Data isn't just the name for this mod, it's actually a real software company based in San Francisco. Yeah, I know. It used and developed on some software open source programs using things like Apache Hadoop, Apache Cassandra, Apache HBase, and Apache Avro. I'm just gonna pretend like I know those are and move on. So you're probably thinking, why would there be a portal mod based off of an obscure software company? Well, it's kinda weird. So basically, the co-founder of Weeby Data, this guy named Christopher Biscaglia, was pretty much the guy that made this mod happen. So after seeing the Portal 2 mod, the Gary Hudson project, which was developed by Doug Hoogland aka Top Hat Waffle, which, I'm not joking, was literally made as a proposal to this guy Gary's girlfriend Stephanie Harvison. They even got Elle McLean to voice Gladys, it's amazing. Anyway, he reached out to him and flew him over to the Weeby Data offices to see the building and make a faithful recreation of the office and game, and then he made the mod in test chambers. And that's just the development of the mod, I haven't even talked about the actual game. Basically what you're doing is this, is you're going through a few different test chambers in order to get some keys to get to this place, I forgot what it was. The test chambers themselves are fine, and I think they all look pretty good. I do think that the whole hub office area looks good, and is really similar to the actual offices in San Francisco. But, uh, there's one important detail about the mod I haven't mentioned. The whole reason this mod was created was in order to hire people to work at Weeby Data. I am not joking at all. And the reason I know this is because at the end of the mod, once you finish all the chambers, you're brought to a computer with an application form for Weeby Data. Yeah, I really have no idea what to say about it, but the only problem is Weeby Data kind of doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> yeah, the company went defunct in 2015 for very vague reasons. The wiki says in 2014, Weeby Data laid off much of their staff in order to reorienting themselves. So yeah, you know, I just realized that I've been talking about the development of the mod more than the actual mod itself. Uh... I give Weeby Data an 8 out of 10. Definitely try it out if you want a quick Portal 2 mod. And if anyone's wondering, I have no idea if anybody was actually hired from this mod, so yeah. Okay, what is there to say about Aperture Island? I mean, are you seeing what's on screen right now? Alright, but for real, this mod was obviously made by some kid that liked Portal and wanted to try to make a mod, and it's... not... good? <laughs> But, like, I can't really see past this mod for what it really is. I mean, if you've used Hammer before, your first map was definitely not good. Don't pretend. I will say, the part at the end where they got a Strider to work is pretty cool, and I'm guessing they just dropped the files for it into Portal 2? I don't know, that's neat, I guess. So, I'll give Aperture Island a 3 out of 10. It was kind of fun, sorta. I do hope the developer for this mod is going on to do other things. <laughs> Mind Escape is another Portal 2 mod that had rocky development. Originally, it was being developed as this other mod called Conversion, but that never came out, so it was repurposed into Mind Escape. I honestly have no idea what the difference between Conversion and Mind Escape is, considering the trailer, photos, and actual game look so similar, so... I don't know. Anyway, the first thing you'll notice when going to the game is that the voice acting is... Добро пожаловать в компьютеризированный экспериментальный центр. Yep, you're probably gonna need to turn on subtitles for this mod. Besides that, the mod is sort of split up into two sections, with the first being more Portal 1-esque chambers, and the second being more in line with Portal 2's art style, which I definitely think is cool. Really, I think that most of the mod visually looks great. They combine Portal 1 and Portal 2 style very well. The only parts that don't really look all too good are the parts for the Portal 2 style chambers, which kinda just look unpolished and not complete compared to Portal 1's part of the mod. Though, the chambers are pretty fun, and I actually think are all designed very well, especially the early chambers. It's kind of funny, because I think that pretty much the early part of this mod is really good, and then the rest of it is alright. Though, there are definitely problems with this mod. For one, the story is kind of... meh. It starts off simple, with you just being a random test subject, and then the facility explodes from presumably Shell, and then it takes a turn from there. 
It's also strange in the fact that kind of like thinking with Time Machine, things just happen. Like, who are these guys? Something else is that the section after the Portal 1 chambers and into the escape are really difficult to understand. You have to do the weirdest stuff to progress through it. But the biggest problem would probably have to be, uh... It really crashes a lot, like so much so to the point where you might not even be able to play the mod without it crashing, but if you get past that, you're able to play a pretty good mod. I give Mind Escape a 7 out of 10. Looks good, plays well, I mean, if you're even able to run the game that is. If you do want to play this mod, here's a fix you can use. I haven't seen it anywhere else, so might as well put it here. Okay, so Memories isn't good? But let me just go over it first. So the thing with Memories is that it was actually being developed as a Portal 1 mod and then was converted into a Portal 2 mod as it came out during development. You can actually still download and play the Portal 1 version, and if you're wondering why all the textures are missing, it's because I loaded the BSP into normal Portal 1 and it had like a billion custom textures. Anyway, the mod is split up into 5 chapters, and in all of them, you have to find 5 cores throughout them and put them into these receptacle things. The first chapter is fine, the second one is interesting, but kinda weird, the third one kinda sucks, the fourth one is cool, but oddly quiet, and the fifth one is good, though it has a cutscene for when you do, like, anything in it, which is really annoying. Now, the best way I can explain this mod is that it's like an okay workshop map. The way it all looks and is put together really feels like it could have been put on the workshop, and that's it, with the only chapter using more than one map and it being the fifth one, which definitely could have been put into one. And really, while the whole mod is visually unique, it just kinda looks ugly. Like, it could have used some more coherent detailing and not just be a port of the Portal 1 style into Portal 2, so I'll give it a 5 out of 10. It's really just okay and doesn't look that good. Okay, so Admitted in Millions really isn't a Portal 2 mod, more as it's a mod that uses Portal 2 as its base. Now, what does this mean? Well, I'll just go over it. So, throughout the mod, there's some rooms with a bunch of buttons, and when you go to press a button, a variation of that room will show up, in which you'll find a cube, or a button to put the cube on. And throughout the map, there's three of these areas which you'll be spending most of your time in, getting all the cubes and putting them on buttons in order to get to this vending machine. Trust me, it makes more sense when you're actually playing it. I think it's pretty neat how each of the rooms has its own song to go along with it, and most of them are pretty good, with an exception of... some... <laughs> But most of this mod is pretty good, and there's a bunch of little secrets you can find while playing, some a bit weirder than others, but I'll let you discover those for yourself. I don't want to include too much gameplay because I think that the most fun part of this mod is just going through all the rooms yourself, and it's really fun to just see what's going on in all of them. And while I wouldn't exactly call this a portal game, it's still got those baseline portal mechanics that are fun to use. It's also unique in how the whole map just takes place within one map, which makes me wonder why this wasn't just a workshop map. It might have just been the sheer amount of custom music, but I don't know. So I'll give this mod an 8 out of 10. It's pretty fun, especially just to see how each of the rooms changes. Portal 2 Eidolon is probably based on something. The only reason I think that is because there's a lot of other stuff called Eidolon, but maybe they just use the same word for the mod. Now, pretty much the mod's most interesting aspect is its art style, which is very bright and uses a lot of concrete and glass. The main puzzle element in these is lasers and doing these sort of weird angles in order to get them into where they're supposed to be. I also think that the music of this mod is pretty nice and it's very calming. But really, I'm just not a huge fan of the aesthetics of this mod. Like, it's good, but it's not really my thing. I usually prefer the traditional style, so yeah, it's not for me. I do think that the cubes and portal gun can all look good though. Besides the style, the puzzles aren't really hard and won't take you more than 10 minutes to complete them all. So pretty much, if you want to solve portal chambers in a nice calm environment, try it along. I give it a 7 out of 10. Uh, this is doesn't have anything to do with the chamber, but while I was playing, I accidentally moved this laser catcher up by accident, so... So, this is just a two-chamber demo, but I wanted to include it here because I felt like it. So, when you press these buttons here, you change what set of portals you're shooting, and are able to walk through fizzlers without them going away. It's kind of like co-op mode, but with no second player. I mean, not really, because the puzzles... The just ignore what I said. I don't know, this concept seems pretty limited, but I would probably be proved wrong, as I'm pretty sure there's already a few workshop maps with this idea. I give it a 5 out of 10. Could be fun, but with only two chambers, it's hard to see if that's the case. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so this time I actually know what this mod is based off, being the shooter game called Super Hot. I've never actually played the PC version, but I played the VR version, so I know the general premise. Which, in the simplest terms, time moves when you move. And yeah, that's what the whole mod is about. Whenever you press down movement keys or shoot a portal, the game goes into normal time. But when you don't, you're in slow motion. And yeah, transferring that over to Portal 2 is neat, but there's a few problems with the way it's done. The whole way that the speeding up and slowing down mechanic is done is just really abrupt and clunky, but that's just the least bad problem with this mod. With the worst being... the level design. <laughs> now, literally, the first thing I thought when I loaded into this map was... Was this made in the PTI editor? Like, there's no concrete evidence that it was made in the PTI editor, but, I mean, just look at it. Disregarding that, I'm pretty sure the guy making this mod thought that the best way to make it similar to actual super hot was by putting a lot of turrets everywhere. And while you may think that having slow motion would make fighting the turrets easier, which it kinda does, I spent a good part of this mod frustrated and just turning on god mode so I could actually progress. I probably would've beaten them all without cheating, but, I mean, jeez. There was this one cool part where I got, like, a TF2 rocket launcher in the form of this rocket turret and to kill these turrets, and that one part gives a slightly higher score. So I give Portal Hot at 5 out of 10. If there were a few more actual puzzles and stuff, it'd be better. It also says in the beginning of this mod that this was created for a super hot competition, which is probably why it's so short. Kinda makes me wonder if they actually won the competition. The Portal Unity reboot is just Portal Unity, but worse. There's not much more to talk about because I already reviewed Portal Unity in my Portal 1 video, though I do have a few things to say. The art style of this mod is a bit weird, combining Portal 1 and Portal 2 style together. Like, it has Portal 2 elements and textures, but Portal 1 elevators and observation rooms and stuff like that. I don't know if this mod wasn't finished or something, but when I played, it just didn't have any dialogue, like not even the original audio. Which made the mod kind of quiet and made me have to wait in certain areas for like 10 seconds for no reason. I give it a 4 out of 10. At the moment, there's no real reason to play the reboot over the original, but I'll just have to see in the future if this gets updated. So, Wake Up, in the best way I can describe it, is like the most okay Portal mod I've ever played. I don't know, there's just nothing in this mod that really grabbed my attention. Like, the puzzles weren't bad or anything, and it visually looked alright, but... I don't know, there's just no real reason to play this mod. It was kinda boring, sorta. Besides that, the story is really simple, as you're a test subject just trying to escape, what a shocker. But the ending kinda caught me off guard, cause like... I didn't know what was going on, so I'll just play my reaction to this. Goodbye, the wrong choice. Suki, I have to tell you something. I'm not the- I got to find from medical leave with Instead, I am your sister. We, Suki and Misa, are descendants of the Vance family. Your destiny is freedom. I have to stay. Goodbye. What? I give it a 5 out of 10. It's okay, but like, there's no real reason to play this in my opinion. It's really bad. <laughs> okay, so obviously there's some context that I just don't have for this, because the mod DB page says that this was a companion mod to a seven-part interview series at the Rock Paper Shotgun website that focuses on level design and process. Though I really don't feel like reading that, so I'll just be going over this as an outsider. First things first, when I booted up the game, I got jump scared by this guy's face that the mod creator uses the background. I'm pretty sure they used that video because it was a video of the few interviews that they used for the actual interviews on the website, so yeah. But once I got into the actual game, it didn't go uphill from there. For some reason, the first map didn't start me in the elevator, it started me a little bit into the test chamber with parts of it already done. So I reloaded this to see if it was a glitch, but nope. If you can't already tell, this mod is very weird, and a bit badly designed, which is ironic as this was a mod made for a level design interview series. And if you think that thinking with Time Machine and Mind Escape had a bunch of random stuff going on, oh boy this mod. Pretty much every part of this is bad, with an exception of one part, which tried to look like Hammer World Editor, and even this part wasn't safe from having issues, as I accidentally broke this part and had to reload the map. I give it a 2 out of 10. Really, you just don't need to play this mod. Like, it's not even fun bad like Aperture Ireland. It also told me on the page that to read this article on the mod, which just said that it was something about journalism, but that also didn't make this mod make any sense. If I had actually read the interview series that this was for, I might have liked it, but I really don't think I would have. So yeah, that's all the mods I got. If you're wondering why there's not as many mods in this video compared to the Portal 1 video, it's really just because there aren't that many Portal 2 mods out there. Really, I think that there's more cancelled and in-development mods than actual released mods. And hey, maybe I'll make this series a trilogy and review a bunch of workshop maps. And so, to finish out this video, I'll rank all 15 mods that I played in this video. Starting with... Level With Me, Aperture Ireland, Portal Unity Reboot, 
Thinking with Time Machine, Four Portal, Wake Up, Portal Hot, Memories, Portal 2 Edelon, Mind Escape, Aperture Tag, Portal Reloaded, Omitted Millions, Weeby Data, and finally, Portal Stories Mel. Now that that's done, I wonder if there's any Portal 2 mods that will come out after this video comes out. Oh, early next year? Well, that's great.